So huzzah huzzah, the Pixel 5 is almost here. It hits the UK and the US on October the 15th. And at just 599 quid, it's the most affordable Google flagship phone since back in the Nexus days. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your view and pleasure, I'm going to whip out this gorgeous 6 incher and take you on a full on tour. And for more than the latest great set, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! And there is our first glimpse of the gorgeous new Google Pixel 5. Let's just stick that aside for now, see what else you get in the box. Looks like a bit of highly exciting documentation. Pokey pin device to get your SIM in there. You've got your mains adapter with pop-up action. A very white Type-C USB cable. And as usual with the Pixel phones, you get your USB A to C adapter to transfer files over. So that's the box. Now the actual phone, the gorgeous, lovely Pixel 5, which of course has been rumoured and uh, hearsayed for many a month now, and now it's finally here. So as you can see, I've got the standard just black model here, which will definitely have some serious goth appeal as usual. But you can pick up the Google Pixel 5 in sort of sage as well, which is kind of a light mossy green. Or at least you can if you pre-ordered the Pixel 5 about 12 months ago, because at the time I shot this video and even just after the launch, it was already sold out. And even though it's called Just Black, this is actually probably more of a very, very, very dark grey, to be perfectly honest. And of course, recently, Google killed off its two-tone uh, design, so it's just a single-tone affair. The actual material uh, used to construct the Pixel 5 is 100% recycled aluminium, and it's got quite a soft textured uh, finish to it. It almost feels like cardboard, weirdly. Uh, it's very, very strange. And yes, definitely feel obliged to make all of those remarks about me stroking my soft 6-incher in the comments down below. All joking aside, though, it is fantastic to have a 6-inch flagship smartphone again absolutely adored the compact nature of the pixel 4a 5g and this world gone crazy with 6.5 6.7 6.8 inch smartphones it's really good to have something that actually fits in the hand and i'm hoping that the pixel 5 will basically be the bruce lee of smartphones sure it's quite small but it should be one tough mother too you've got a good bit of gorilla glass 6 cover in the front and then let's see how that aluminium back holds up hopefully will stay scratch and scuff resistant and the google pixel 5 is fully ipx8 water resistant as well so you can take it in the bathtub you can take it in the shower you can take it in the swimming pool whatever you fancy and it's very simple straightforward design as well you've basically got your usb port and your speakers down below you've got your sim tray to shove your sim card in obviously you've got your power button a silver affair this time a metallic finish rather than one of those nice and vibrant colorful power buttons that you got in previous pixels and your volume rocker which actually blends blends in quite uh, nicely with the chassis there. And no dedicated Google Assistant button, I noticed, which of course you do get on <laughs> quite a lot of other Androids these days, annoyingly. You've got your square camera chassis, again, similar to the Pixel 4a before, it just shunted away into the corner there. Almost completely flush for the surface, barely sticks out at all. And then you've also got your physical fingerprint sensor slapped there right on the back of the phone. And that too is almost completely flush for the surface, just slightly indented so you can actually feel it out without having to like turn the phone around and work out where the bloody hell it is. Is. Anyway, it's time to get the uh, Pixel 5 all set up. And uh, when you do come to stick your SIM card inside of this thing as well, it's just a single physical SIM that it takes. As you can see there, just a single tray. Uh, but it does support eSIM as well if you do want to go dual SIM. Quite handy if you want to uh, do a bit of traveling, you want to get some international SIM action on the go. And of course, there's no support for micro SD memory cards as usual. So you are stuck with the 128 gigs of onboard storage. All right, all right, all right. We are all set up here on the Pixel 5 and good to go. Go. And of course, it is the latest Android 11 experience, as you'd expect from Google, straight out of the box. And at a glance, of course, it doesn't look very dissimilar to Android 10. Of course, you've got your usual Google Discover feed, you've got your apps tray, uh, you've got your notifications bar, and the settings menu looks very, very similar as well. There are a few little tweaks here and there. So, for instance, now the uh, power menu has a couple of bonus bits, such as the ability to tinker with all of your Google Home smart goodies, as well as all the other stuff you had, like the Google Pay Fast Access. And of course, all those great bits that were added. Uh, recent Android updates such as the car crash detection all that good stuff and touch words that rear fingerprint sensor seems to do the job quite nicely just a quick tap and you're pretty much straight into your desktop it's not the fastest around but it seems pretty reliable now one of the Pixel 5's features that I'm already very much enjoying is that gorgeous 6 inch OLED display. It's a full HD plus resolution, 2340 by 1080. So I know while some flagships go with quad HD plus, to be honest, with this size of screen, that is a gorgeously crisp image. Seriously, get your face right up to that thing. You are not going to notice any pixelation whatsoever. Absolutely pin sharp in every regard. You've got HDR10 support, and as you can see there, Netflix HDR content is supported at launch. And if you dive on into the display settings, you can have a play around with the likes of the color temperature as well. As you can see, it's adaptive to begin with, but 
if you prefer those nice boosted vivid hues uh, all of the time you can stick that on otherwise more natural visuals as well and oh yes the pixel 5 does have a 90 hertz display and it is just gorgeously smooth i love the little bouncy animation as you're flicking between your desktops everything just looks silky gorgeous as for the audio well as we already discussed there's no headphone jack on it major bummer dude but you do get a stereo speaker setup it's not really proper full-on stereo let's just boost up the volume though and see what we got here Five Mark II reviewed for one of the latest greatest tech. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So yeah, technically you do get sound out of this earpiece speaker, but it is tinny as out. It is definitely the bottom mounted speaker that is really pulling the weight here. So while you don't get any kind of stereo effect from the Pixel 5 uh, using those built-in speakers, and it definitely doesn't feel like the sound is being blasted at your face, it's still actually quite a surprisingly powerful full-bodied sound on that top volume, and you should have no problem hearing it, even at a pretty noisy environment. As usual you've got fast access to the live captioning uh, feature which is great news if you're hard of hearing or anything that can add captions to anything where speech is detected. And if you jump on into the sound uh, features as well there's not really much to speak of down here. Uh, there's no Dolby Atmos support or anything by the looks of it. Just your usual shenanigans and of course a good bit of now playing as well. Standard pixel feature so if you're in a shop a bit of steps comes on over the shop radio you're like oh what is that banger? From back in the day that'll clue you in. Now at 600 quid the Pixel 5 is considerably cheaper than most other Google flagship phones of recent years, basically any of the other Pixel flagships and one of the reasons for that is because it doesn't use the latest Snapdragon 865 chipset, instead it uses the 765G. And while some people may balk at the idea of a flagship not having the absolutely most super duper chipset out there, the 765G is absolutely fine, it'll do everything that you need it to do. As you can see from my Geekbench uh, test that I just run, absolutely brilliant scores, this thing can multitask with the best of them. And if you're into mobile gaming, no worries on that front either, the likes of Call of Duty, PUBG Mobile, all of that good stuff will play without a hitch. And that'll definitely be helped along here in the Pixel 5 by the 8 gigs of RAM stuffed inside as well. And one of the the benefits of that 765G besides the fact that it is cheaper is the fact that it's actually got a 5G modem built in unlike the more expensive 865 so that again helps to cut costs. So yeah the Pixel 5 is 5G ready although sadly there doesn't appear to be any Wi-Fi 6 support according to the specs. Now of course one of the biggest issues with its predecessor the Pixel 4 was the fact that the battery life was so absolutely bloody awful. It was the one major reason why I just could not recommend that phone at all. I do have higher hopes for the Pixel 5 though because first of all that Snapdragon 765G is rather energy efficient and you got 4000 milliamp cells stuffed in here 4080 to be absolutely precise in case you're one of those pedantic types who's going to immediately jump into the comments and say I think you'll find. Of course I will be fully testing the battery life of the Pixel 5 for my in-depth review so stay tuned for that to see what I really think of it. Of course when it comes to smartphone batteries a lot of the big headlines recently have been around fast charge and notably the likes of the Oppos, the Realmes, the OnePluses which have their 65 watt fast charge and Xiaomi has one up to them even. Now, unfortunately here on the Pixel 5 it is 18 watt fast charging which isn't quite a patch on those bad boys. Still at least you've got wireless charging support here on the Pixel 5 which some flagship phones do not offer and you do have the battery share feature as well which is basically reverse wireless charging so as you can see if you've got some accessories that support Qi wireless charging you can just slap them on the back of the Pixel 5 give them a little bit of a uh, boost up in power on the move. And last up let's finish this Pixel 5 unboxing with a quick squint at that rear camera tech. And what you have here is the same primary 12.2 megapixel dual pixel sensor as the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 4a 5G. And it's got that built-in optical image stabilization as well so hopefully should prove awesome for your everyday photos. As you can see there you've actually got an on-screen level which you can turn off if you don't like it. it just helps you to get a nice clean level shot. And I do really adore the Pixel camera UI. It's just so nice and simple and straight streamlined it'll suit most people down to the ground you can pull on some extra options uh, like so including the flash the timer motion photo of course which just brings your gallery to life as you're skipping through it with brief little clips and at any point as well you can swap to the ultra wide angle lens which is the secondary lens on here to 16 megapixel effort just by pulling down like so and as you can see that gives you a nice wide angle view and then you can skip back to the primary lens just by sliding up. And you can notice uh, there when it swaps from one lens to the other, you just notice the uh, transition between the two doesn't seem to change the color temperature too much at all. And indeed, if we take a look at the photo results, you'll see very, very similar as far as the uh, color reproduction is concerned. Although the photo taken with the primary lens seems to have a bit more sort of texture to it. And as usual, the Pixel is absolutely excellent in high contrast situations. As you can see there, you can actually tweak 
the brightness of your subject as well as the overall brightness of the shot independently which is a great little feature and of course you've got all the usual bonus camera modes on here like good old portrait mode so you can uh, snap a lovely shot of your subject with a nice bokeh style effect in the background and once again as you can see you can uh, tweak the actual brightness of the overall shot as well as your subject. And I'm definitely still a big fan of that night sight mode as well, which does a fantastic job in really low light situations. It can actually pretty much see in the fricking dark. This will take lots of different shots at different exposure levels and then meld them all together. It'll take a little bit longer if it's a really dark situation, of course. And as you can see there, like lots of background detail, uh, which would be lost just using the standard auto mode. And it captures really nice natural looking colors, even in pretty much pitch black darkness. And the pixels are usually pretty decent when it comes to your whole movies as well as you can see it's set to 4k ultra hd by default which is great because often these things are set to full hd for some reason and uh, you can shoot it either 30 or 60 frames per second even at 4k level and there's a handful of other bonus modes if you're interested too and then last up let's flip around to that 8 megapixel selfie snapper uh, which seems quite low res compared with a lot of selfie shooters these days uh, quite often you get like 16 or 32 megapixels even uh, but frankly with a mug like this the lower resolution the better and uh, those excellent google software smarts will mean you get nice crisp images all the same oh yeah Mm, stunner and there you have it my lovelies that is the pixel 5 in all of its glory quick tour of the hardware and the software uh, so hopefully that's given you an idea of what the phone is all about stay tuned for my in-depth review i'm also going to be doing a pixel 5 versus pixel 4a 5g versus pixel 4a comparison so you can see how the three current google pixel smartphones all stack up against each other so that's what i think so far what do you think It'd be great to hear your first impressions of the pixel 5 flagship has google gone the right way by trimming a bit off the price going for that 765g chipset or are you disappointed still that it doesn't have the 865 be great to hear your thoughts and for more on the latest greatest tech please do pop subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely week everyone cheers love you